Good afternoon and welcome to the promotion ceremony in honor of Major General Carl H. Gingrich. Our host for today's ceremony is the Chief of Staff of the Army, General Randy A. George. Please stand for the singing of the National Anthem by Staff Sergeant Caitlin Withers from the United States Army Chorus and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Jack Stummy. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming in the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, today is a great day and we give you thanks for it as we are reminded each day of your faithfulness and mercies. Lord, we have come together on this joyous occasion to celebrate the promotion of Major General Gingrich and we are grateful for his faithful service to our nation and its values over many years. I acknowledge your word in Psalm 75 which reminds us that promotion comes from the Lord and so, as Major General Gingrich takes on this new rank and responsibility, I ask that you, who gives promotion, would also liberally give him a renewed and even greater depth of wisdom and discernment. May he find continued joy in service. And during challenging times, may he know that as the Good Shepherd, you walk with him on point. Thank you for his family who have stood with him his spouse Lori and their children Audrey and Connor and his wife Jessica, who have had part in this day. Thank you also for many family members, friends and mentors who have stood with him and his family and encouraged them on their army journey. Father in heaven, I close by asking for your hand of power and endless grace now to uphold our formations wherever they may be, as well as their families who support them. Let them know that you are always with them also. I pray all these things in your most holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General George. Okay, um, good afternoon everybody. Great to see everyone here and uh, apologize that we're a few minutes late. <coughs> Uh, but it, one thing it did remind me of, and the Secretary, uh, Sergeant Major of the Army, and myself were today at a dignified um, transfer at Dover, and it just reminded us, and we were talking about this a little bit on the way back, um, just about how important our jobs are, and really at every level, and that everything that we do here, you know, the consequence of what we do, and how it's going to impact people all the way down um, to the foxhole. So um, I'm, we're all really happy, um, Carl, to see you get promoted um, today to, to three-star because you're one of those kind of leaders um, that I know is going to make a big difference. So this has been many, many months in coming. And I know that's a really scary picture up there. <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even imagine showing up in the G8 and seeing that if I was, if I was a brand new major. So. Um, anybody out there think we should have Carl retake that picture? Get maybe with the, so he's going to have to do that anyway here when we pin another star on him. So, um, Secretary Under, Secretary Whitley, all of our Army teammates um, that are here, a bunch of old friends 
that are back. A little bit of an old G8 reunion. I'm looking around um, that are here, but it's great to, um, to have you all here today. And before we, we talk about Carl, I want to talk a little bit about his family. I think everybody in here knows that if you're uh, in the military, in the Army, it's a family journey. Um, many moves and uh, time away. So first, to Lori. And uh, they met at Fiddler's Green at Fort Knox. And for any, any armor, old armor out there, um, so I actually went to the armor advanced course, and the one thing I knew about uh, Fiddler's Green, why it was really popular, is because it was the only place that served alcohol in Hardin County. Is that not true when you were there? Um, but uh, met at Fort Knox, and Lori's been an elementary school teacher um, for 30 years, and really all over the world, in Germany, Georgia, Kentucky, Alabama. Uh, and then a couple of, couple of times here, so you've done some certifications in, in multiple state. Um, she's not only taught and maintained her own career, um, but I think most importantly, um, what you've done to raise two wonderful kids who I got to meet um, here earlier, and in Connor and in, in Aubrey. So I wanna, I wanna thank you, Lori, um, for all you've done to be the glue inside your family, for taking care of everybody, um, and raising those two wonderful kids that I'm going to talk about next. Um, Connor, their son, 29, he's here. Raise your hand there, Connor, so everybody knows his wife, Jessica, um, coming here from Louisville, Kentucky. Um, he's in a manager in an accounting department, works for GE Appliances. And Jessica is a transplant care coordinator and registered nurse. Aubrey, raise your hand, Aubrey. All right, 21, she's a junior at University of Kentucky, and I will say Connor's also a wildcat, graduated from University of Kentucky, and uh, is doing very well in her studies and is studying clinical leadership and management. Um, and her boyfriend, I'm gonna ask him to stand up, <laughs> who's in Air, Air Force ROTC, but I just talked about him, about what a great opportunity the Army have, so. <laughs> I wanted, I wanted you all to see him. Um, I, was, I was very impressed by him, and you can tell him why he should maybe come over to the Army. So everybody could. All right. But uh, again, um, Lori, to the you know, two wonderful kids, um, both of you, and I think that's often our greatest legacy, um, and it's great to have you here um, and back in the Army fold. Also here from Kentucky are uh, Tommy and Carolyn. That's Lori's parents um, that are down here. And I want to thank you for your love and support um, to Carl and, and Lori uh, through the many years and um, many moves. And I was going to ask the question, you know, Carl got his graduate degree from, um, from Louisville. Can we even talk about the Louisville Cardinals? No? All right. <laughs> Okay, and Carl, I know your parents are unfortunately no longer with us, and you just lost your mom um, just this past um, fall, and I, I know that that's painful, and uh, I know she'd be very proud of you um, and all that you've done, and to Lori, and again, what you've done as a family. Okay, a couple others that I want to recognize from New Jersey. I think your uh, sister, Laura, and her husband, Jimmy, are down there. Met them coming in. Um, nieces, Elena, husband Mike, and their ch children, Evan and Walla, and Wyatt, right there in behind. Um, Caitlin and husband Brant, I know they're down there. Brant introduced him as, himself as Caitlin's husband. So, um, and I mentioned Lori's career in education. I think uh, we have some of your fellow teachers, where are they all at, from Great Falls. Thank you for being here. Um, and I would say it's probably too early in elementary school to start recruiting, but maybe you can plant the seed a little bit for us while you're at it. So I'm gonna, we're going to talk about uh, Carl for a few minutes. Got, his, uh, got an ROTC scholarship, and like a lot of us and a lot of people in the military, wanted money for college, With, came in, came in to, the, uh, to the Army, went to Temple University, um, got a degree in civil engineering, 
and commissioned as an armor officer. Armor officer. He almost left after his first assignment because he missed Desert Storm. And then some, that wonderful lady in the red dress to his right told him that was not a good idea, so Lori, thank you for keeping him around. Uh, transferred from armor, armor to, to be an Orsa, and I will say it's one of our most, uh, has been one of more, our most demanding technical fields, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. But Carl has excelled at every step of the way, and when I start talking about this and some of the people that he's met along the way, um, you'll see that. And he has uh, clearly established himself as a subject matter expert uh, and also a great leader. And whether that's been serving in the J-8 or a G-5 section or a PEO team, and I can speak for experience whenever I had an ORSA, and I think this is what makes Army ORSAs great, we throw them on almost any kind of unit anywhere and expect fabulous things out of them, and that's almost always what we get. I will also um, say that we, you don't often as a major get to testify uh, in front of Congress, and Carl got to do that as a major for the Base Realignment uh, Commission. Do you remember those great days, Carl? So I can congratulate you. I'm glad that you got to do that, and you beat me by several years. Um, but it's just truly impressive um, what you've done throughout your career. And I think you've been uh, setting uh, really blazing the trail as an ORSA. So there's a, bit, a little bit of an argument on whether Carl is the first ORSA to get promoted to three-star. And so I thought I would settle that. We did a little bit of research, and General Maddox used to be the, uh, the G8, and uh, he was a dual-track officer and was not an ORSA. So Carl, congratulations on being the first three-star um, Orsa in our army. Okay, very easy for me, and I always uh, try to sum up um, really amazing people in just a couple of ways, and I, I thought of three things um, for Carl. And Carl and I have spent a lot of time together here over the last year and a half. Um, he's in, in the office a lot uh, for my favorite topics that the under loves as well, called DMAGs and DWCs and, and all of these meetings. Um, but I have met few other people in my 35 years um, who lead by example when it comes to absolutely mastering topics and being an absolute expert. And I have, I'm gonna read something here in a few minutes, met uh, very few people like Carl, um, almost a savant with the way he can talk about almost any topic that our Army is facing, whether it's logistics, space, signal, you name it, and um, Carl, and I know that comes from a lot of study as well. Um, you're very smart, but I know you put a lot of hard work in. You also have a gift for explaining very complex things in a very simple way, uh, which is also something that's very hard to do and very few people can do that. And then you match that with what uh, is also very hard and that is having the personal courage to often tell people what they don't wanna hear, um, which I think is invaluable for our army um, invaluable for our military and really good for any organization, but it takes a special person uh, to be able to do that. And then you would think in that that uh, that would be a hurt, pretty high priced or high paced and hard environment to work in, but I've always been amazed at the team that you have and that you had in PAE and, and how much everybody enjoyed um, being on your team and being around you. Um, so thank you for also being a phenomenal leader. So we've reached out, we got a couple of, couple of shout outs, it's in smaller print, so I'm gonna put on my glasses here. Um, first, to, first from uh, Lieutenant General, uh, retired Jim Pascarette, and I'm a big fan of, uh, it's all good stuff, Carl. I saw Carl starting to look, <laughs> Carl was starting to look around a little bit, getting fidgeting in his seat. Um, and again, I have great respect for everybody who's, uh, who sent this in. Um, but from, from Jim. 
First, I'm so happy the Army saw fit to select Carl for appointment to Lieutenant General as the Army G8. He is the total package. A world-class analyst can explain the complex in terms to senior leaders that resonate and assist their decision-making. A fantastic leader, stands his ground for the Army in joint meetings exceptionally well, steady under pressure, great family man, and most importantly, a Philadelphia Eagles fan. I guess you guys text back and forth, got a little thing going during the Eagles game. I wrote Carl a note when his confirmation was announced that he will be the best G8 that has ever sat in that seat, and he's been acquiring the experience and skill set for the job for close to 30 years as an ORSA. From Lieutenant General retired Bob Lennox, also uh, a former boss, and many of us in here know, know uh, Bob Lennox. Carl is a brilliant guy in his brain power, but also in how he treats and deals with people. At Lieutenant General Ganey's promotion, you noted how Sh Sean had a gift for getting things done in the Pentagon. Carl is like that and more. He was adept when I first met him. I was a deputy G3, a major general, and he was in PAE as a lieutenant colonel. And I knew immediately that he could outsmart and outmaneuver anyone in the room. But he did it in a way that didn't make you feel that you were a dope. In fact, it made you realize that you had to up your game to keep up with him. He made everyone around him better. And from uh, Major General Retired John Howerton, who we both know, good man, um, former deputy. Is John here? Anywhere? Hello, John. Good to see you. General Gingrich is an amazing officer and professional. He has a deep level of understanding of his team and their jobs. He expected the same from each person, do your job. First and foremost, the Army was his priority and he took the entirety of the PA need to deliver for the SEC Army and the Chief. And he trusted each of us to help the Army be successful. He did his part too with incredible courage. And many times he did it at his own peril. At pegs or commands, money and programs are unbelievably emotional topics. That's pretty true, pretty emotional especially if you don't get what you want or didn't get what you want the year prior or in some cases less or none at all. He had many uncomfortable conversations with members of the Secretariat and our staff as well as OSD, ACOM commanders, COCOM commanders, etc. From a personal standpoint, I couldn't have asked for a better boss to work for in my last job in the Army. He is someone I would consider a friend. And from General Lori Robinson, who's now the Commandant of serving as our Commandant of Cadets, also a former deputy. This one's pretty good too, Carl. General Gingrich is the most knowledgeable officer I know in the Army. Uniquely, he not only has a wide breadth of knowledge in every Army program we have, he has a matching depth of knowledge in each one as well. As his milled up in PA and E, people would ask me if he was field artillery signal or logistics officer before becoming an ORSA because of the way he could talk in great t detail about hypersonic weapons, migration to the cloud, and depot maintenance all in a single meeting. My answer was always no, but I wouldn't want to be on the other side of a debate with him on any of those topics. And that's, how, that's what you would face too right there. <laughs> I could not think of a more qualified officer to serve as the Army G8. He cares about doing the right thing for our people, their families, our units, their equipment, and our Army. And I try every day to emulate his leadership in both my words and my action. And I can't think of uh, better compliments to have from your fellow um, GOs, Carl. So we are excited. Um, to pin this third star on you and have you leading our uh, G8 team and really helping our Army um, get better. And all the way back to the beginning, we got a lot of work to do. And I'm looking forward to rolling up my sleeves with you um, and start to make some of that change. So let's pin on that third star. Would the Gingrick family please join General George and Major General Gingrick in front of the flags?
Please remain seated during the publishing of the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has proposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelities, and abilities of Carl H. Gingrich. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore promoted from Major General to Lieutenant General by order of the Secretary of the Army. Replacing the rank jacket is Major General Gingrich's spouse, Lori, and his son, Connor, along with his daughter-in-law, Jessica. Replacing the epaulets are his daughter, Aubrey, and his mother-in-law, Carolyn, and father-in-law, Thomas. Replacing the rank on his garrison cap is his sister, Laura. Thank you, Gingrich family. <clears throat> General George will now present the promotion certificate to Lieutenant General Gingrich. General George will now reaffirm the oath to Lieutenant General Gingrich.
Thank you, General George. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Carl H. Gingrich. Okay, I've had a little while to think about what I was gonna say today. <laughs> had to get that out of the way early. I also heard they're towing cars outside because you're parked in the wrong spot, but I'll leave that up to you to figure out here in about a half hour. Um, let me start by thanking some critical people who made this um, event possible today, the unsung heroes. Uh, thank you to the protocol office, our narrator, uh, my new personal soloist, Staff Sergeant Withers. She doesn't know that. Uh, I told her about that earlier. Um, she came in uh, during the G8 hallway party as part of a chorus. And they are top notch. They are the best of the best. And when she did a solo, and the other people who are you know, just incredibly talented, when they're sitting there going, as was I, she became my personal soloist. Thank you, Staff Sergeant Withers. Chaplain, thank, yep, thank you. Awesome. Chaplain, thank you for your kind words, appreciate it. Uh, the entire G8 team, especially Colonel uh, Ryan Morgan, who actually isn't here because his daughter had a dance recital and that's exactly where he needs to be, but uh, he was very integral here. Thank you for making this a first grade event. Uh, for and a special day for my family. Chief, thank you for hosting today. Really do appreciate your kind words. Um, and, and I think you're carrying over the faith that Chief McConville had when he uh, first advanced me uh, in, to this position. Secretary Warmuth, Madam Secretary, I love working for you. Uh, I love working for the entire team. Uh, Honorable Camarillo, uh, former secretary, Great working for you too, Secretary, but I think we got a great leadership team in place right now. Dusa, uh, been a good wingman, good leader uh, so far. I look forward to partnering with you even more in the future to, to move the Army forward in the direction that we need to. Uh, uh, need to. Uh, some other VIPs here, it's like the who's who. Thank you for my fellow R staff. Eric, thanks for coming. Really appreciate your leadership in G8, all that you did for the team. Heidi, Rob. Uh, thanks uh, for being here. Let's see, this is like a who's who. Uh, um, Lieutenant General Retired Swan is here. Uh, Pascarette, uh, Donahue for Micah. I was hoping he was going to make it or Halverson may not have made it. Uh, General Spore uh, is here. Major Joel, uh, General Joel Tyler and his wife Stacy. Uh, and then John Howerton is here uh, as well, kind of a personal hero of mine. So John, thank you for coming out. Mike and Selinda Altamare, this old J8 reunion. Uh, came, uh, departed, retired life for a little bit down here uh, to come enjoy the traffic once again. Justin Um is here, friend of the family, and uh, probably my littlest friend here, Bo, um, you know, as well as some of the elementary school teachers from uh, Great Falls Elementary Chief, I am working well left, okay? This is a recruiting event, okay? <laughs> Just straight up. I, I'm, I'm starting early um, to try and get that out. So. Um, Many of friends I see here, Cape, uh, we may not see eye to eye all the time, but we are always professional and you are great teammates, right? Just great teammates. Thanks, Mike, Brandina, uh, and some other distinguished guests. Um, I've had, uh, like I said, I've had quite a bit of time uh, to think about what I was gonna say, but um, first off, this is very humbling. Uh, every, you, I, hate, I, I hate sitting there listening to people talk about me. I'd rather talk about the team and have people talk about other people. This is very humbling. I am humbled that God has delivered us to this place, a place I never imagined in my wildest dreams growing up inner city youth in Philadelphia. Uh, I am well aware of the amount of talented officers that we have in the United States Army, especially in the general ranks, um, who are equally deserving for this, equally deserving uh, and capable. And I owe it to them every day to bring my very best and do my very best for the Army, and that's what you're going to get, Chief, Madam Secretary, every day. Second, I am honored uh, and excited to be allowed to continue to serve, because that's what this is all about. Um, I get to continue to do what I love for a little while longer with the ability to affect greater change using my rank for good. Finally, this event has little to do with me, 
and has everything to do with you seated here in the hall. Uh, the old adage that it takes a village, well, for this kid, probably takes a large city, suburbs, lots of people had a hand in this. Uh, I take very little credit other than to be the recipient of that uh, love and mentorship. Um, first, for me, always is family. They're what makes me, what drives me, what grounds me, and what means most to me. I love the Army, but I love them even more. Without them, I would not be standing here today. My mom and dad are no longer with us. Um, my mom passed away on Halloween of this past year, uh, and I was hoping we were going to get this done in time for her uh, to see it. Unfortunately, no, but I know my mom and dad, uh, as well as my brother Kenny, uh, are in heaven smiling down today. My mom and dad, their love and guidance set me on the path that got me here today, um, and I, like I said, I know they're watching over. My wife, Lori, my ride or die. I could have said a couple other things, but we, you know, I just said we're my ride or die. Uh, we're coming up on 33 years of marriage. I hope I did the math right. If not, <laughs> you may not see me later on this evening. <laughs> she remains my best friend, confidant, supporter, and critic. While supporting me and our family, she has managed to teach just about everywhere we were stationed, as the chief said. But it's not just teaching in Georgia, it's teaching in Hinesville, Georgia just outside of Fort Stewart. It's teaching in Montgomery, Alabama, you know, not Huntsville, uh, and as well as here in Fairfax County. She deserves the attention today more so than anybody um, because having a career and being a military spouse is incredibly difficult, but it doesn't stop there. As the chief said, she is uh, the principal uh, reason that we have produced two incredible children who I cannot be more proud of. Connor and Aubrey are plotting their own course in life. They are going their own direction and we support them every day. And they are doing so with character, compassion, and resilience. Something you don't find in society these days. Connor married up. We now have Jessica, my favorite daughter-in-law, uh, as a member of her family. And uh, Aubrey's boyfriend Luke is here and we are working him hard. Um, Again, we work both in the elementary schools as well as in the uh, colleges and universities. Uh, my in-laws, Tommy and Carolyn, also known as Sweetie, around the, the Gingrich House. We had Camp Sweetie as the kids were growing up. They're here today, and frankly, there are no words uh, that I can say would capture the level of thankfulness I have for them in supporting our family as they have over the years. They have been there for every move, promotion, crisis, and celebration. Lori and I could not have done it without them, period. I almost killed Sweetie one time when we were trying to change the carpet out in one of our houses. I, I, I thought I'd killed her that day. Um, so we've cut back since then. So thank you for always being there for us. Uh, my sisters, uh, Robin and Laura. Robin's also here. Uh, she made the trek down. Uh, be careful, they're from Philly, okay? They're just telling you straight up. Laura and her husband Jimmy have been longtime members of my fan club, and now their daughters uh, are part and parcel, Elena and Caitlin, as well as their husbands, uh, and then their children, Avon and Wyatt. I think Wyatt's outside. He's a little too formal for him, um, so he needed a little bit of time out. But thank you for being here. Thanks for all your support. All right, let's see. Um, you are shaped by many people throughout your career, um, and rather than try to name them all, a lot of them are here, uh, I'd like to call out a small sample from such a large population. I started in the Black Horse Regiment, the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment. Just so happens that today's the anniversary of the Black Horse Regiment. So Alans, there we go. There we have a couple of them out there. Uh, I started there uh, in Germany, and I was raised by non-commissioned officers. Every promotion I've ever had since I was a lieutenant, I thanked Master Sergeant Retired Truman Payne. He was my platoon sergeant. I was a platoon leader for 22 months. That man probably taught me more about leadership than anybody else in my career. He's probably running a farm somewhere in North Carolina off the grid because he was old school. Um, but I tell you, that man shaped me more than anything else, uh, than anybody else. Barry Tankersley, Larry Lavasser, one of our master gunners, he's actually here today representing my first assignment. 
Thank you, Larry, uh, other non-commissioned officers like Dick Morgan, who are no longer with us. In turn, they were led by great officers who shaped a young, immature lieutenant. Guy Swan has invested a lot of time and effort in me, uh, and I really appreciate it. He's probably been into more of my promotions than just about anybody else, and I appreciate the support. Chris Carnes, Chris Franchek, Jim Miller is here, was in Howitzer Battery uh, back in 1st the 11th. Uh, Mike Hartmeyer, Jeff Hoadley, just you know, some true leaders who, who made me who I am today, and I'm very thankful. As I progressed through my career, I was blessed to have numerous mentors to assist in my development, resulting in who I am today. Leaders such as General Nakasone, who just retired and changed out today. I'd work for that man in a heartbeat, uh, just an incredible leader. Uh, Lieutenant Generals Lennox, Halverson, Speaks, Barkley for Mike. Uh, great civilians like Gary Martin. I don't think Gary made it here today, but he was the PEO at C3T, and that man is just incredible. I aspire to be as good a person as he is, a personal hero of mine. Friends are also a key ingredient in success. You know, surround yourself with good friends, right? Just as you say to your kids as you're a parent. Uh, there are too many to name today, but a few have an outsized influence on me. Uh, Jim and Liz Pascaret, even though Jim did cheat on the marathon. I'll tell you about that tonight. <laughs> I was hoping the chief was going to bring it up because I was going to slam dunk it right here, but uh, I'll hold that story for later. But yeah, he cheated in the Philadelphia Marathon. Um, you knew I was going to get you back one day. Mike and Slinda Altamir, uh, John Ferrari, a personal friend. Cedric Wins is here uh, from VMI. Cedric, thank you for being here. Really do appreciate it. Um, Bob Phelan, Wes Padilla, I saw you, Wes. Uh, Eric Brown and his lovely wife, Deb Jones, uh, Ashok Deb, not his wife, Deb, Catherine, I know, I know your name. Uh, Keith Hawk, Vic Harmon, Kevin McConnell, all personal friends. Uh, I, I do want to take a minute, you know, Chief, since you identified me as the first three-star ORSA. This goes all the way back to OPMS 21, uh, is when we came up with you can be a functional area or you can be a basic branch. So I went to the majors board and I had to p fill out a career field designator thing. I was going to school at night at the University of Louisville while also being a small group instructor at uh, Fort Knox. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to be an armor officer, liked what I was doing at school. Went over to combat developments uh, at the Armor Center to work on the medium brigade combat team, also known today as the striker. Uh, so I worked there as my first assignment. I filled it out, said, hey, I want to be an ORSA. So I was promoted to major and I became an ORSA. And I've been single-tracked in ORSA for 24, almost 25 years. Um, and it, what's interesting to me is kind of as you lead uh, ORSAs, as you lead organizations like PA&E, um, you know your message is resonating when they actually, you know, start to reflect you and your personality uh, and the culture. And so they had a very small going away potluck for me um, about a week ago, two weeks ago. And in PA and E, and this is resident with all uh, FA 49s, uh, we had a couple sayings down there, like not everybody gets a trophy, right? Um, everybody wants to be a gangster until it's time to do gangster stuff. <laughs> See, Under's favorite, whenever he needed to have gangster stuff done, he called PA and E, <laughs> right? So they, essentially no quarter asked, no quarter given down in PA and E. It was full on, right? Uh, it was a contact sport down there. So they said, sir, we have a very special going away gift for you, and we hope you really like it. And this is what they presented me with. A autographed picture of Tommy Tuberville. <laughs> My work there is done. Pete, enjoy. Keep your, keep your arms up all the time, okay? <laughs> keep your guard up at all time, because that is a rowdy bunch. Uh, listen, I, I'm proud to have led the uh, ORSA community. Uh, I am proud to continue to lead the ORSA community, and I look forward uh, to doing that. Uh, I pledge to make the most of this opportunity and effort to create future opportunities for each and every ORSA that are out there. I am plowing the ground for you, uh, and my success is hopefully to pull you along with me. Uh, and I hope to do that uh, here for a couple of years. 
Our army is going to need our skill sets, as the chief talked about, just straight up. Uh, they need them more and more every day, and we're going to deliver, um, all of us together. Finally, to the G8 team, let's go, right? Let's go. Uh, our role is critical in the continuous transformation of our army through the fielding of critical warfighting capabilities and capacities. I am honored to lead you, and I look forward to the journey we will take together. Thank you all again for coming out and celebrating with us. This is about you. This is not about me. Thank you so much, uh, and thank you from my family. Um, Lori and I have a ton of food. I think we have too much. She thinks we have too little. I need your help. I, I, listen, I need your help. All you're going to do is sit in traffic. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, we live in 212 Arlington, uh, 212 Arlington Avenue, just right around on the other side of the uh, parade field. Please come over and join us um, so that we can continue this celebration. And I can thank each of you personally for everything that you have done for me, for my family, uh, that allowed us to get here today. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, General Gingrich. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and join in the singing of the Army song led by Staff Sergeant Withers. The words to the Army song can be found on the back of your program. March along, sing a song with the Army of the Free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might and the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won, and the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence out and strong. For where we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. You are invited to congratulate Lieutenant General Gingrich and his family in the receiving line. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.